It is called, I met the world's most powerful hammer. I don't know much about tools, so what's it? Um. Hey, going. I'm still in lockdown, and I'm bored, really bored. So bored, I've been finding ways to make mundane activities more of a challenge and dangerous. But so far, haven't found anything exciting enough. But then, yes, I saw okay. the experts, Mexicans. So today, I'm going to make my version of their hammer. Yeah, most powerful hammer. And even though I'm thoroughly sick of lockdown and being unable to do stuff, luckily today's sponsor, NordVPN, allows me to travel the world wherever I want. Here are some photos of me on my recent trip to Paris. And here's me in New York Key. I've been a Nord customer for years and love the fact that it's easy to use with a single click, allowing me to access Let's a five. Use my link in the description now and go start surfing. All right, now some of you probably already know I'm not the first to copy the Mexicans with explosive hammers. And an Australian company, Ramset, beat me to it, making this, which is used to drive nails through brick and metal. And I could just buy one of these, but look at that price, $1,000. I'm definitely better off making my own. So the first thing I did was buy a $2,000 lathe. Okay, so this is my plan. I've collected all the scrap metal in my house. Which I reckon I can combine to make this. It's pretty simple, just a block of metal in two pieces with a swivel point here. Then you put the nail inside with a charge behind it, and when I hit the nail here, it moves back and hopefully sets off the charge, firing the nail out the end. And some of you might recognize some similarities between this and stuff made here's baseball bat, but look, if he's allowed to copy my steel toed croc video and make it much better, then I'm allowed to copy his video and make it much worse. And that's my idea, but I don't actually think I have the skills to make this, since this is my first time using a lathe, and so far I've only made this. So hopefully making the hammer is similar. And unlike this, which is made from round bar and fits in the three-jaw chuck, I'm using square bar for the hammer, which doesn't fit. So either I add another jaw on the side, or use this four-jaw chuck. And this sounds like an easy solution, but when you put material in a four-jaw chuck like this, it needs to be centered using one of these. And I hate being precise. I always avoid it, but now, thanks to this tool, I have the ability to tell how unprecise I am, accurate to one hundredth of a millimeter. This is dumb. I feel like nothing I do makes any sense. I hit this side, and now this side has moved in. And then I turn this thing, and now the whole thing's the wrong way. But after mucking around with it for ages, I seem to have gotten the piece roughly in the middle. So I brought in the tool to do a cut across the face. And lathing is a lot of fun and really makes you feel like a man with a big manly tool. Mainly because it allows me to finally grow facial hair. And that face okay. and feels pretty smooth. And after comparing it to my face, it's much more flat. Okay, now I'm gonna drill a hole in the center of the block. And this is the scary part, as if it's not centered, all the machinist watching will make fun of me. And this sucks. If I can't get the drill bit out, I'm gonna have to start all over. I tried yanking it out by turning the lathe on while holding the other part still, 
and、うん、even tried putting it in the freezer with diced mangoes, which always helps me relax and shrink in size. But nothing worked. But then I had a genius idea. I grinded some flats on the side of the drill bit and used this wrench to attempt to turn it out. Yeah. Which worked, but I still need to make the hole a little larger. And I've decided from now on I should definitely use a safer approach and use a dummy and some lubricant.、Oh, no. And I'm pretty sure the lathe isn't meant to be making this noise, so I just put on some ear protection to fix the noise, and that looks pretty good. And the blank also fits. It's pretty perfect. Okay, the hole is done and seems to be in the center. So I just cut the tip off using the world's most unpleasant tool, and then decided I had had enough of staring at these blanks and wanted to see what actually happens if I just hit one with a hammer. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And now, without ear protection, for some reason. Three, two, one. And I, I don't know why I did that. My ears are literally still ringing while recording. I'm setting the sound effects. I still decided I want to see what happens if I hit it again, but this time with a nail on top. So I put the nail in, then place the blank underneath. And it's very important I do this in that order, so I don't accidentally set off the blank and die. Then I hit it as hard as I could. Two, one, and nothing. And again. This time, I placed a sharper point behind the blank, and still nothing. And then I tried placing the blank on flat metal, and also clamping the device so it doesn't fall onto the ground and then point towards me. Three, two, one. <laughs> God, what the? F Holy. Looks like a, a, a spot or something. <laughs> oh, okay, that is terrifying. terrifying. Oh, I cannot believe that these say they are weak. I am so glad I didn't buy the strong ones. Let's check upstairs and see if that did any damage. Okay. That's ten times. And that works a little too well, which might be my fault, as I spent an hour, like a sweatshop worker, machining like a hundred nails down until I had an airtight fit in the hole of the hammer. And I'm really sad to think I should make myself like a Kevlar apron or something to protect my innards. If for some reason anyone watching has some Kevlar they don't want that they want to send me, hit me up. Okay, moving on with the build, I need to make a hinge between the two pieces. So I decided to just use a store-bought hinge, which will attach to the bottom of some flat bar like this. And now it's time for something else I've never done, which is use this tap and die set to create threads in metal. But first, I thought I'd better read the instructions very, very carefully to make sure I don't die. Then, once it was kind of together, I realized a potential problem with my design, which was that the round could go off when I closed the hinge, which it didn't. So I set it off with a stick once again. Three, two, one. Oh my god, it's too powerful! So I went straight through. <laughs> And let's go check upstairs again. What? And that works great. But I still decided to swap the hinge out for a more beefy one, which I took from the door of this cabinet. And I like this thing. It's like I'm holding a badly rendered pistol. Now I need to decide on the locks that hold the pieces together. And at first I was going to go with this kind of artistic wanky lock, but I don't actually think it would hold together with the extreme forces on the hammer. So I went with this sturdier one. Then once I tap and not died the rest of the holes, I've essentially got the finished thing. Except it looks really ugly. And after looking online at other kinds of hammers and other stuff. 
I found this by Adam Savage, which I'm going to take slight inspiration from. And after all that grinding, I was curious as to how much metal I had actually lost. So I measured it, and strangely, I gained around a centimetre. Then I cleaned up the other pieces using my sick tech deck skills from my childhood. And so far, this has actually been pretty easy. But now comes the hard bit, where I grind in the more delicate details and risk stuffing up this whole piece, which I'm terrified about. So I rolled a die to see which piece would be sacrificed first. Now I'm gonna try and create an angled section on the side, and I can do this in two different ways. The first, by locking the grinding face at an angle, or I can do my favorite method, which is to lock myself at a 45 degree angle so I'm consistent with my grind. And after combining the two, I created this. So then I just did the same thing on the front okay. to create these cute little triangles, which despite my fears, actually look pretty good. So then I attempted That's the scariest part, which is a rounded groove cut into metal, which blacksmiths and whitesmiths like to call fullers. So I tilted the belt at this sharp angle and started. And while doing this, I actually found the best angle for grinding was when I placed my head right here, which allowed me to see right along the face. But it also means the metal dust gets a good view of my face as well. And after all this grinding, I was starting to create a bit of mess on the floor with all these iron filings. But luckily, I had a mate who told me a tip, which was to place a bucket of water directly underneath the grinder, which is actually great as it keeps me nice and cool while doing this hot work. Mm -hmm. Okay, the fullers look pretty good, although it is starting to look more like the G word, which I'm too scared to say on YouTube. And this definitely isn't a G, it's a hammer, not illegal, and it's just a homemade, slightly a dodgy version of something I can buy from stores. So then I switched to this belt, which I found in the bin of a waxing salon. And the tiny hairs stuck to this belt give the metal a really nice finish. Mm, it's and look at that, I'm proud. It actually all looks good, except these little overhanging lips. So I gave it a labiaplasty. Now you're probably wondering how I'm gonna stick a handle on this thing, and so am I. I definitely should have planned how I was gonna do that from the start, because now I'm just gonna have to go with the easiest, worst option, which is most likely gonna ruin all of this work. And I'm gonna attempt to weld a piece of pipe here and then just shove the handle in like this. And after a quick test, cutting another piece of pipe and welding that onto another piece of metal, and then hitting that as hard as I can against an anvil, I think it might hold. So I just got a piece real hot, squished it in the vise, and then closed my eyes and hoped for the best. And I really hope this doesn't stop. No, this has been my longest project so far and took me a crazy 13 minutes and 59 seconds to get it's here. Just going to I had to sit through a Nord sponsor and two unskippable ads. So this better work. And after filling the piece up with about an inch of lava, the weld actually looks all right and the piece hasn't deformed. So then I cleaned off the black stuff until it was shiny again and then did some research trying to decide on the finish for this metal. And what I do like is stone washing, where you etch the metal in acid. Then people on the internet will get that metal and put it in a rock tumbler to get this nice looking surface which protects the metal from rust and looks rustic. And I don't have a tumbler, so I figured out another easy way to make your own. All you do is you get your metal, put it in your pocket with some stones from the garden and then put it in the washing machine for about an hour, which gives you this. And I decided I don't actually like um, this very much, so I'm sticking with the shiny finish. But I'm also going to copy what every wog that moves to Australia does and cover pointless parts of it in gold in an attempt to make myself look more serious. Then I grabbed some oil and rubbed it all over the wood before using some quick set epoxy and a bolt to lock the handle in place. Now the instructions of the epoxy don't say you have to panic, but I find I get better results if I use the wrong size bolt, which I then have to cut down and then burn myself on. Please. 
I then like to freak out that I'm not going to get the handle in place before the epoxy sets, ruining my whole project, meaning I'm not going to be able to upload a video in time and I'm going to become irrelevant and not be able to upload on YouTube ever again. And it worked. Then I took it back to the beautiful hairy belt to smooth it out. And I do like these hairy belts a lot, but just like the tie place down the road, I find I get much better results when finishing by hand. And it's done. I don't know why I didn't okay. place a piece of wood there or something. Let's go upstairs. What? Oh, um... I'm very, very happy with that. This thing is powerful and beautiful. Definitely the coolest thing I've ever made. But I just realized that the vise was definitely adding heaps of support on the side and on the bottom of the hammer. So before I swing it by hand, I decided to put it on this rig, which perfectly recreates how my arm works. which didn't work. And again. Come on. Then I figured out what was happening. My hammer was working in the vise, but not for the reasons I intended. I thought the nail was moving back and pushing the blank, setting it off, but that wasn't actually happening. Because I was scared and crouching down to make sure I didn't die, I was actually hitting the top of the hammer, not the nail, which meant I was squishing these two pieces of metal together, setting off the blank. So I switched to a shorter nail so that the end of the hammer would actually hit the table. And... Okay. Let's hammer some stuff that you shouldn't be able to, like a... Uh, uh Well, far out that was allowed on. Okay, it's stuck. Whoa. That is punched a clean hole. You can see the punch marks or the way that it kind of blew it out at the back. That is insane. And after that success, I think I'm going to take it off the rig and have a go at hitting it myself. And I'm honestly so surprised this thing hasn't blown apart yet. And even my dodgy weld seems to somehow be holding up. So I stacked up some stuff in front of me and decided to hit, um, this book. Oh. Oh my god, I'm terrified of this thing. Things away from me. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. That was that.
actually fine to hold. Don't go all the way through the table. <laughs> Went through the book, through the table, through this surfboard I have here, and is sticking out. <laughs> that is insane. I'm gonna stop playing with this thing. This. Thank you so much for watching. If you like that, please subscribe. It was a powerful young person who went to the book, to the table, and was crazy. It's a little bit of a serious video.